Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at a method set. And I think it's best we just kind of look at a little bit, some pictures first, and then we'll jump in and look at some code, okay? Just try and get our heads wrapped around this idea of a method set. But you could probably start thinking about, okay, we know what a method is. It's that function that has a receiver. And so um, if that's a method for a type, then the set of methods or the collection of methods that you define for a type is the method set, right? And so we're going to try and understand what the method set of an interface is. And that's very easy. It's clearly stated in the specification. So we're just going to reread that and just say, hmm, this makes sense. And then we're going to look at the method set of a type T versus a method set of type star T. And you may not think that oh, there should be a difference there. But remember, if I have a variable or an object of type T, that's very different than having an object of a pointer to that type, right? Two different things. All right, so let's get into it. So this comes directly from the specification. I have a link at the bottom there. And it says a type may have a method set associated with it. We just said that if you have a type and then you implement some methods, and remember implementing a method is simply putting a receiver. Because if you just have a function, it doesn't have a receiver, it's just a function. But once you have a receiver, then you're saying, oh, this function is linked to that type. So a type may have a method set associated with it. The method set of an interface type is its interface. So that simply means that when I define a interface, um, the methods that I say are in that interface when I define it, those are the methods set for that interface. I, I can't go and say I have methods that receive this interface. Okay, very different thing. You can only do receive on types and even an interface is a type because the interface already defines its method. <laughs> those are its method set. Kavish? So when I get to the code and I'm going to show you this this part but i hope that sort of made sense that once you define an interface and you said like our interface duck has waddle and quack those are the method sets for that interface okay you don't go and then just try to implement methods now that um has receiver of that interface type you have receiver of the other types that are based on the interface we'll see that in code the method sets of any other type t Besides interface type, we already just said that the interface type, it method set is just the method it defines. <laughs> um, but any other type, T, consists of all the methods declare with a receiver type, which is what I said on the previous slide, that if we're going to define some method, and the only time we have a method is once we have a receiver. If we have a function with no receiver, it is not a method. Okay? And so once it's a receiver, we know which type it belongs to, and those set of methods are the method sets of that type. The method set of the corresponding pointer type. Notice the corresponding pointer type, star t, is the set of all methods declared with receiver star t. Makes sense. If you declare some methods that receive star pointer, then the method set is all those, or or in addition to, any method that was defined for t. Now you might be going, well, wait, wait a second, bro. You said it all. Oh, all the methods of a type is all the methods defined to receive that type. And it seems like for pointer T, we're cheating a little bit. We're saying that T, its method sets are all the methods that define T. And then for pointer type, it's the method that decides pointer type plus the methods that may have been um, defined for T. And that is true. And you'll see why this is. We can look at that in the code. That is, it's also contained the method sets of T. Whatever. We already, I just said that. For the rules of private struct containing anonymous fields and all that stuff, we are going to ignore that for now. We already covered anonymous field, but we don't worry about the special rule. Any other type as an empty method set. So if you have a type and it doesn't define any method as a receiver, then the method set is empty. Again, it makes sense. If you define methods, then there's a, this is methods in the method set. If you don't define any method, then it's empty. Okay? Now, each method must have a unique or non-blank method name. Again, that just only means that regardless of if we, what methods we're going to come up with for a type, you cannot overload it. So for people who know Java or C++, there's no overloading in Golang, okay? No saying that I'm using the same method name and I'm going to use the, the parameters to the method to differentiate it. That's not happening. Or the return type. That's not happening here, okay? So no overloading. So that's why it has a unique non-blank method name. Of course, it have to be non-blank. If it was blank, what would you call it? All right. 
So another part here is the method set of a type determine the interface that that method type implements. Makes sense. If I have a type T and I have 10 methods defined for that T, then a subset or all, so a subset is a set of itself, of the set itself, right? So either all 10 of those methods might implement some interface or a subset of those methods might implement an interface or several interfaces. And again, as we saw in GoLang, you don't have to be explicit about the interface you implement. You might be implementing an interface and you don't know. If I write a method for string, called string and returns a string, I've implemented the stringer interface, but and how many other interfaces that might just have a string method with the same signature alone, and I don't know and I don't care, okay? I just go about my happy life implementing my one method, and if it happens to satisfy some other interface that's defined or defined later, who cares, okay? And that's the one great thing about Go, is that you might be satisfying an interface that's to come later, after the fact that you already done define your methods. And so in other languages, you have to go back and retrofit things, okay? All right, so let's keep going. A lot of talk in here. I'm going to try and keep the video slow. So just to wrap up, let's just say um, I have a type T, and in the one box on the right, the blue box, I'm going to put all methods. These are different methods, hence the different colors. Three methods I have defined to receive T. I also have four methods defined to re receive T star, okay, or star T rather, pointer to T. So... Taken together, the black lines, those two methods, would pro implement some interface foo. Why? Because the interface defined the two method signature, but it doesn't say what, how you should define your receiver, whether you're going to use T or T star. It doesn't care. All it cares about is that your type has these, um, the signature. And so there again, interface goo might be implemented using, you know, um, three methods that are all receiving um, were implemented just you doing the pointer receiver, right? And of course, even if it shares one of those methods with foo, again, we don't care, right? So that could be like our stringer interface defining string and then some other interface also defining string of the same exact signature. doesn't matter. And so you start seeing the flexibility here in Go if you program in other languages with things like classes and inheritance. It's really, really flexible. And so again, who um, our interface, who, you know, um, same thing, um, implements, gets implemented by two methods, one that's based on type T as a receiver and the other one based on star T as a receiver. Okay. And so um, what we can say then is the method set for T is, are those three methods. The method set for star T, even though we only define four, it's actually those four and the three from, on T. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let's let's pretend and simplify things. So before I had a ton of methods, blah blah blah. Here I'm just saying I have a type T, and the receivers I have is this. I have let's say T is equal to person, and I have font P, um, the receiver P, and then name. Okay. And so this name method um, returns string, and it receives a person. Okay, just a copy of a person. On the other side, I have set name, which is a method that takes the parameter n string, and it, um, you know, whatever sets the name on the person. But it receive the important thing there is it receive a pointer to person. So what we're saying is that the method set for t, if we look on the left hand side first, the method set for t is that one function that we defined for it. It is. It does, it does not include the function that we, the method, sorry, the method we define for start um, P, for start T, okay? It does not. And that's why I draw a line through it. And you might be thinking, well, if I have a, a, a variable of um, T or a variable of person, surely I can take the address of it, if I have a variable T of person, and I, take, I can take the address of it and then call set name. And, and you can, but we're gonna show, show later why just saying that oh, T itself um, doesn't really have set person, but rather if you can take the address of it, then yes, you can call it. And then on the right hand side, um, even though we only define one method, uh, which is set name, we star T picks up in it method set 
the additional method we define on T because if you have a pointer to something, then if that thing is valid, you can dereference it, which would give you T, and therefore you can call the name, right? So, um, so that's why it, it picks up that automatically. And the other way around on the left hand side is because you might have something, but you may not be able to dereference it. It sounds crazy, but I can have something that I cannot get the address of. A simple example is I can take a string and get the address of a string, but I can take a string and slice it and get, you know, like a character, but I cannot take the address of that character, okay, to be able to change that character to something else in a string. This is not C and C++ where you can do crazy things like that. Again, so I'm talking here, but I think this is the last slide here. So let's go, um, let's save what we're doing here and let's go look at code. All right. So um, I put a link to, if you want to read up some more of this stuff, um, here, you know, we're talking about types. If you look at method set, it has that whole um, text that I, I just read and went through. And then, you know, um, you can go read a little bit more. Well, that's it there. Um, I also put a link to, to this um, sort of article or blog post here that introduced talks about method set. So you can always find more information if you need another way than how the specification might explain things. Okay. Or I might even explain it. Remember, there's always several ways to get to any one destination. All right. So let's keep moving there before this video is super, super long. All right. So usual, I'm going to copy minus R, 0, 5, and 0, 5, and then make that 6. And I'm going to see is CD into 0, 6. And then I'm going to start up my code editor. And my font should be big enough. No, it's not. Okay, come on. Let's increase it a little bit more. All right. So here I have person. And um, I'm going to take out this. Well, let's leave this, this, this for now. And then I'm going to say, let's call this name changer, name setter. Um, let's call it name setter. Sorry, like how Google two, thing, two things. And so, for example, um, I'm going to just take these out, take those out for, for now. And so, going to be set name. So now we can see it. So I have this signature, function signature, that matches this. It's a function with a name, set name, takes this type. And we know that since it has this receiver um, here, no, this is a method on the type star p. And this is a method on the type p only, instead of pointer to p, person. And so the first part of what we learned today was that the method set of an interface are the methods defined for that interface. So that means the method set for this name or interface is this set name. That's it, it method set on content thing. Now, you, what that means is that if I try to do font and do some receiver, and let's call it receiver name, namer, and then I go set name, right? Try to implement back this. On, so if I try to implement a method on the type, that's illegal because that does not make sense, right? You're not going to be passing a uh, variable of this type. You, you're gonna, well, you could pass a variable of this type, but really it's going to be an object, sorry, an object of the type that implements this interface, right? Because the method set for this interface is this that's already defined. That's all it means, that first part meant. Okay, so now we have exactly what we were talking about before, where we have a method defined for star pointer and a method defined on the person, right, and star person. And so what they're saying is the method set for P is just this guy, string. The method set for star P are both. Now, you might say, well, for all, um, here is Jane. And certainly if I say Jane, that set name, I can do that. I can do, you know, Mr. Rose. And then I'm going to prove to you, Verl, that when I do a printout of Jane, it was changed. So you're saying that how um, the object um, doesn't have, um, doesn't get the other guy, doesn't get the one from the pointer. So go run main. And so this works. So it makes me look like a liar, doesn't it? Well. What's really happening here is that Go is saying, can I 
take can I take the address of Jane and if yes then I'm gonna say that oh it's just as the same as if I take the address of Jane and then call you know um, set name on it so really what we're doing is um, a short time okay so I can take the address of Jane and so therefore since I can <laughs> I'll just um, uh, up here um, since I can take the address of Jane I'm gonna take the address of Jane and then now I have a pointer and therefore since I have a pointer to that type I can call that name so that's what's happening here is a is, is just a shorthand all right so when so now we know that oh if Jane I can do that okay um, of course if I actually created a pointer like pointer for the person pointer to Peter is equals to you know new value to new person right I can um, I can do that and then of course I can then set you know P pointer Peter that set name uh, set name come on how is not getting me I'm think set name oh set name all right um, I was writing low I was writing low case Mr. Peters, okay, I know I call this Peter and Mr. Peters, that's yes, fine, All right, and FMT, that print line, and then I'll print this out, okay, so that's a pointer, that's fine, um, and you can see that though, using the pointer, I get, I pick up this string method, and again, we set that with pointer, it also picks up, and the reason why is because we have a pointer, I can certainly dereference it. If it was a null pointer, that would be a problem. I can dereference a null pointer, but my pointer is not null. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, oh, what do I have? A problem here. Um, so, um, so I have a new object, and um, why is it complaining? So, a new person. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Where that is equals to hmm. unexpected outside of function body. I don't have anything outside of function body. Um, why is my thing acting up? Yeah, this. I fix the person. Um, so I have person struct, and so I have a new, I can say a new person. Oh, wait a second. Okay, so I'll just do it this way. I'll create a person object and just say, um, take the address of it. So I'll just do it. I don't know why that wasn't working. Um, hmm. Because you use new to construct objects, so what did I miss? Let me joke. Now I'm curious why that did not work. Um, let's see here. Go lang new. Yeah. Why why did not work? I'm curious now. Uh, new 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 allocation. Type that 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 that. Allocating allocating allocating. Let's see here. Find new. Okay, a real good string da da da. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, new. So I have struck. Ah, oh, I have to put it in parentheses. Yeah, silly me. It's a new function call. It's like a new function call. Okay, all right, fine. So let's do that function call. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I say new, and now I have Peter pointer to this thing, and then now I have a pointer, and that works also. Okay. So now this works so see there we go Peters okay so no question about the pointer being able to call set name because I did say it oh if I have a pointer as a receiver I can call set name but here I was able to use also string which we, the, the documentation said would happen so we understand that that it inherited because this is syntactic sugar so when I do this this is syntactic sugar for FMT that print line um, star star p Peter 
which passes in a person, which we know is how the printf function will automatically call, or we can call it explicitly by doing string, right? So, so this is syntactic sure, all right? Um, and if we had any other uh, receive or a method, it would be the same thing. We can call that method on the pointer, and it would just be syntactic sugar behind the scene. Golang is pretty much dereferencing that pointer because it says, oh, there's a valid pointer, it's not no and thing. No, if it's null, you try to call it, then run time, you're going to have an error, right? It doesn't know what you want to do or when you're going to initialize that. So anyway, so there we go. Um, so why then doesn't it work the other way, even though it look here like Jane work? So to understand that, let's do this. Let's say I have a map um, that I'm going to store some people in. So I have map of string to person. Okay? Make sense? And let's initialize it with Jane in the map. And I'm going to put um, Jane, the object in there. Okay? Make sense? So now I have that. Now, let's do fmt at print len. And I'm going to print m0. And then now I'm going to say um, fmt. Okay, let's do this again. Well, I want to do it again, actually. But, um, okay, yeah, I'll do it again. So now what we want to do is we want to try and get, we know if we say m0, square bracket, Jane, right? That's going to give us a person because we're saying if we pass in a string, we get a person out, right? Now imagine if we were able to take the address of this. If I could take the address of the person who is inside of this map, then even though my map is specifically saying here that it's storing persons in it, and you're going to get back a person, if I can take the address of that person that's storing the map, then I can call, right? I could call, I could wrap around that, and then call that set name on it. changing Jane's um, name but that would be wrong you would not expect that if you have a map defined this way that somebody should be able to take the address of the object stored in that map and be able to change it change it on the line object right so and so this is not allowed so even though you have an object here when you call this you get back a person taking the address of it from the from the map no can do this does not work right and we can try and run it and you'll see. So now everything you can get an object, that means you can get the address. So it's if it's addressable, and this is not addressable. What you can do, what you can do, you're allowed to do, is to say like p colon equals uh, colon equals to that guy there. And then now you can say, well, I want to take the address of p. And then now you could call set name on that if you like. And so while this is going to work, and so I can do a fmt that print line on p and you're going to see that oh we have an object whose name we have changed but it wouldn't be the one inside of our map and so um so we can run this and so you can see that right we got an object whose name we can change but it wasn't um jane right because jane we had changed to mr rose before we call this anyway right so jane was changed to mr rose all the way up here all right so I hopefully that sort of illustrate why you can't even if you have an object if you, you certain things it would be illegal if we actually allowed um, that type to be able to inherit the pointer one okay that would have been a problem and you would end up with really bad code and surprising code now on the other hand if you have a pointer here that's fine because no when you do a lookup of this what you're getting is a pointer, and as we know, that pointer can be dereferenced and set name can be called in it. So that is totally fine. So now we're going to see it all. Jane names get changed. Oh, let's see. Um, blah, 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 where, oh, so I can do this. I have to store the underlying object itself. Uh, come on. And there we go, right? So now you see that the object I had in there, the age is still the same, but I was able to change the name. All right, I don't want to make this too long. Um, so um, again, you could create a pointer anyway. Um, I was trying to do new, like this is what happens when you program in multiple languages. You sometimes get them mixed up. Um, but anyway, here in Golang, calling new is like a function call. Um, if you don't know any other language like Java or C++, don't worry. Um, 
And so I could create a pointer there. The other way for me to create a pointer was to just say var and to say this type of this is a pointer to person. And then I can say, you know, p Peter is equals to new. I just allow you to do it in multiple steps. Or even if I had said take the address of some person literal I've created, right? So I here I have created a person, took the address and stored it here. So all these different ways work. So multiple ways to skin a cat. Um, certainly don't feel that oh you have to stick to one way of doing things. So put the parentheses around there. Let's leave it that way. Okay, I'm gonna cut it here. This video is probably way too much longer than I want it to be. But again, I'm trying to go through this slowly and try to illustrate the concept. Hopefully you get it. Um, thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Definitely, again, post questions, comments, suggestions, whatever. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Please spread the word. And take care. Have an awesome day. Bye.